fucking love the way you stood up for me back there. Oh, yeah. you're speaking mean to me now. Yeah. <laughs> Joey, yeah. Woo. Like, even you just saying that, woo. I was like, yes. I am a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally like, oh my gosh, I want that in my life. <laughs> Shout at me again. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the What Would You Do podcast. We are your hosts, JJ and Nimi. And uh, this feels really weird. And I'll tell you why I'm talking like this right now. Why are you talking like that? Because I just popped some codeine and I feel like it's kicking in oh. now. <laughs> I feel high. I don't think you should have said that. <laughs> no, it's just a painkiller. It's called a period. Just yeah, get over and it's it. cool. It's not. Can we just specify... There is no codeine in Nimi at this moment. No, I was just joking. That's the kind of fun we have on this podcast. Just regular Panadol. Yeah, just get um, to know us first. Guys, something that you missed, because uh, we were not, the mics went on, was JJ has a plan and a theory for this podcast. And I, I think... I don't want to share it. No. No. You share This is it. a behind the scenes master plan. This is a strategy. That you think I'm actually going to go through with and execute. Well, it doesn't know I'm really up to you, is it? Well, I do. Go on, share it. It affects both of us. So he, we want the podcast to blow up because I know usually people put in like four years of work and then their podcast blows up. Diehard listeners of this show will have seen that the content we speak about on this show doesn't necessarily relate to the clips that we put on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a reason behind that. Yeah. My stance is that the, the filth that we speak about on the show would live lovely, would be a lovely home for our Instagram. Yeah. Nimi's stance is that it's a bit too rude. It's risky. It's risque. Mm. For the region we're in. My theory is, and this is the strategy I propose to Nimi, yeah. and I think you're going to sleep on it. Okay, yeah. I'll and come back it. to yeah. me. Yeah. Here's my master plan. We put the risque content on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah. It goes regionally viral. Mm -hmm. Someone high up sees it and went, there is no way that's been speaking about in this region. Mm -hmm. Me and Nimi get detained. <laughs> yeah. Paps outside the building <laughs> as we leave yeah. in the police car. Oh. We get thrown in jail. Mm. UK news hear about it. They go, what did they even say? That's fine. Let's get them out. Mm. They pay the bail. We get deported. I can see the headlines now. We're now in the UK. Yeah. Podcasters offend. Ex-radio stars. Ex-radio stars, podcasters put to jail for some risque content. Yeah. We go to the UK. We do a tell-all interview mm -hmm. with Holly and Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are no longer there anymore, yeah. <laughs> we do a tell-all interview on this morning with Alison Hammond and Dermot O'Leary. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then everyone's like, what? 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 Where's the context here? Let's hear, let's listen to what they were talking about that was so offensive in the first place. Yeah. Boom, more listeners, more money, more revenue. We are famous. Nimi's the new Alison Hammond. I'm the new Dermot O'Leary. We take over the world. That's my, that's my strategy. And the thing is, like, when you're saying it, JJ, like, I'm in. Like, I am so invested in this plan. Mm. But you're saying it so easily. Because I'm, um, I, oh, you obviously didn't know this about me. I'm a PR marketing machine. Yeah. The ideas I have are crazy, but work. Right. So I honestly think that if we went down this route, take a leap of faith with me. Yeah. Hold my clammy hands. Yeah. And let's jump off the cliff. My thing is, right, you have an actual son, like a little human being that relies on you. Maybe when I thought about this plan, I didn't think about him. You're planning to be detained for three days. It's not going to take three days for the UK media to get us out. Maybe it's three months. Okay, I, I'm not about that life. Look at me. My nails, my face, my hair. I can't live that prison life. You would be a dream for the ladies in that prison. Exactly. And I would be a dream for the men in that prison. But it's sometimes you have to make those sacrifices for your little butthole. For the greater to just good. For the greater good. For the greater good, Nimi. For this podcast. Yeah. Maybe it'll be three months. But may I throw the name Andrew Tate onto this podcast? I didn't want to. Oh, wow. But he got detained for six months mm. in Romania yeah. for crimes he may or may not have done. Right. He's come out. A more famous person because of it. That's the route. He's made the plan. Mm. We're just following it. 
or hear me out Go here, on. Mm. or mm. we could just see this through for a couple more years and keep going consistently with this podcast, and then we will gain success, fame, money, and all of that in a normal way. That is a theory. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that has been done before. Does it ever occur to you that you are seeking excitement and adventure in your life right now so bad that you are trying to find ways to have it in your life and you're dragging me along with you? Now you've just offended my whole family, Nim. <laughs> there is nothing more exciting than my life. Okay, fine. All right? Yeah, fine. Bath time, so exciting. Bath time. <laughs> <laughs> Little dinosaur, so exciting. It's a hippopotamus. Oh, hippopotamus. A dinosaur, grow up. Um, yeah, what would you do podcast, guys? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, look, you'll see if we'll execute the plan or not. Um, but what we do love... It's not in our hands. It's not. Um, but would you... DM us, what would you do uh, podcast? Would you like to see the risky content that we say on the mm. show? Would you like to see that on Instagram as well? Let us know. The reason, can I just give my reason why? The reason I think we shouldn't isn't because I think we'd get deported. It's just that, like, it is really overly risky. If we post that up, like JJ or, or us talking about on the last episode, someone's 12 inch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if we post that up. Two inch. Two inch. If we post that up on our social media, I think we're going to get. Like, we have to be culturally sensitive of where we are. And see, Yasmin agrees. Did you say yes? Oh, nah. oh she said nah. She's nah, Gen Z. Gen Z. You wanna, this is what you want to hear. They want to fuck shit up. Yasmin is the culture. Yeah. This is what Gen Zs want. It's a new world out there, Nimi. The times have changed. Okay, we'll find another co-host then that's willing to go a bit risky. Yasmin, get in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very uncomfortable doing this with Yasmin, yeah, to be honest. She, you very uncomfortable. She'll be sat there silent, yeah. crying in the corner while I'm just shouting I profanities know. at her. Yeah, JJ had to apologise to Yasmin. To uh, Yasmin so. is uh, one of the team at Podcast Now, my company. She's a content executive, but she kindly sits in in the studio when we, when we do this. And... She's amazing. And that's the I want to say about that. Yeah. Now, it's in a public forum now, uh, Yasmin. Go. Yeah. You can't take that You back. can't start abusing me and shouting at me during off, off air. Okay. So, here we go, guys. We'll get into <laughs> a bit of um, a content. Shall we do that? Or Let's do content, please. Let's do some content. Yeah. Okay. Should a husband defend his wife against insults from his family? People have chimed in. Okay, mm. because it's an uncomfortable situation. Mm. As the husband, you're in the middle between mother, family, and your wife. Mm. I'm watching um, Love is Blind at the moment, and that happens a lot. Have you watched Love is Blind? I think I've watched it previously. None of the new stuff. <sighs> Fucking amazing. Yeah. New season, not as good, but still, they've introduced their new wife or husband to their family for the first time, and the family just are like, what? Last week, you have, wouldn't even have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Now you're saying you're engaged and being married in two weeks. Yeah. And they just all kick off at the, at the other per person. And normally they sit there quite quiet. Yeah, right. Okay. So this is what most people have chimed in to say. One lady said, my husband just sits there and lets his family and staff be, staff. Re be really mean to me. He doesn't like confrontation, he says. But I think he needs to step in and say something. What's your position on confrontation? How do you handle confrontation? How do you feel when you're being confronted? I'm an avoidant personality. Mm -hmm. I have an avoidant like approach to everything. So when I'm being confronted, I actually like to stay a lot more silent. Mm. I think you, have you ever seen me be confronted? I think we've confronted each other at times. Yeah. I but can't I remember how you reacted. I'm quite like, Very I like rare. to stop, think, I don't like to react. So I feel like you're more reactive. Very emotionally reactive. Yeah. Whereas Very. I'm not. I just, I like to go away for a few days, think about it, and then I'll get back to you. Like if I feel confronted, I feel a zombie or a monster just enter my body and it's not me anymore. Yeah. And I see red and I just can't, I'm shaking in anger. Yeah. Um... JJ's just like back so, against the wall swinging. Yeah, yeah. But I don't use violence. So I have to like... I'm like a, ch a toddler that isn't allowed their toy or something. Mm. I just feel myself like shaking. I have to like storm out the room or whatever and take a breather. Yeah, but I think it comes across like, because you're passionate. Very. But it comes across not like that. It mm. comes across a lot more angry. Mm. 
than actually passionate. People but I'm not angry it. often. That's not yeah. like a personality default. But every now and again, if I feel like I'm being hard done by and that person is having a go at me, something enters my body where I'm just like, I'm about to pounce here. Yeah. So I have to move away because that's not how you conduct but like, yourself. If you're dealing with confrontation between two people who care about, like who you care about. So like your mother, your wife mm. and your mother. I like had an argument. If they had an argument and you're in the middle of it, what God. are you doing? There was one time, and they didn't have an argument, but there was mm. one time, like Catherine was fairly new, meeting my family and stuff like that. And they are very loud, as you can probably yeah. tell from me. Um, and Catherine, like, everyone was just having a bit of a laugh. And then my mum piped in and went, Catherine, in this family, you either speak up or shut up. <gasps> Cap was like, I was like, you're right, mum. And did <laughs> Calm you say down. anything? I was laughing my head off. I was oh. like, shut up, mum. Yeah. That's interesting because when we were in LA, my husband and my sister yeah. had a bit of a tiff, let's call it that. They are more in a relationship than you and your husband, yeah. to be honest. They're like best mates. They are best mates. They're so close. Mm. I've never been involved in their friendship or relationship. Even when we were younger... When me and like my husband had split up when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, they still remained friends. Like they were still cool. Anyway, so that's a bit wild. No, not really. No, no. not to go to your sister. Like, can you just pull away for a second because we come out of the same womb? God damn it! Oh yeah, have some respect. Yeah. Um. So they had a little bit of a tiff in LA. I still don't think they've spoken about it. But anyway, <laughs> I obviously was very much in the middle, but I did not say a word. So I get where this guy comes from in not getting involved. But nah, leave if someone them. is blatantly disrespecting the other person, like if your if his mother is disrespecting his wife, you have to step in and put people in their place. Yeah. Like, why should your wife be feeling like shit because you weren't able to control it? No, but sometimes your eyes are a glazed donut because they are, you're so in love with this person, you don't mm. always see what maybe they're doing wrong. So your family don't have that love for them and call them out on it. Yeah. And you just go, no, I'm backing my, my wife or my husband, but you just don't see it. Yeah. Because you're so in love. And yeah. It's just, you're blind to it. So someone said it's actually called emotional incest. When the mother, sister, oh, aunties, de I know. definitely don't want that. When the mother, sister, aunties, etc., get involved into who their son, brother, nephew, or cousin is dating, they become a nightmare. While veiling it under a "I want what's best for you," so in English, please. So she's basically saying emotional incest is try pretending like you're protecting like your family member, uh. but what you're calling it is like you're trying to do what's best for them. But what you're trying to do is actually emotionally control your son or whoever it is like your mother yeah. trying to control your life still and they can't help the fact that someone else is in your life so yeah parents just getting too involved in general way too involved yeah that happens a lot I would just suggest people my mum was buzzing just to get rid of me and yeah. but the fact someone else was with me she was more than happy to go there you go your problem now you're someone else's problem yeah. so should a husband defend his wife against insults from his family if they're blatantly insulting her yeah probably most probably. There was like a family argument, actually. We went with Catherine. And basically, me and Catherine just walked out really? together in solidarity. Nice. We would not stand for this. And we just went to the blow-up bed and lay down. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. But we are, me and Catherine are like the comfort for my family. So we just went away and then slowly trickling through. It was just like all the family members like, oh, awkward. Okay, it was like bed. six of them all just lying in our bed. Like, what is going on? <laughs> just leave us alone, please. we got to try to get away from this. Yeah. I would just say a husband should defend his wife at all costs. Yeah, I You're think... You're a unit now. Yeah, I think you have a responsibility to not outwardly show cracks in your relationship, but then you can deal with it behind closed doors. Yeah. So you stick up for your woman, even if they were completely in the wrong, yeah. you stand by them, and then when you go home, then you hash out going yeah. I said this because I love you mm. not because I necessarily believed it yeah. this is what I could have said and I didn't yeah but kind of like put her in her place privately yes yes I'm and here she'll for be that. so fucking horny for that to be honest oh, women God. love shit like that they do like, I fucking love the way you stood up for me back there oh yeah. you're speaking mean to me now yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joey, <laughs> like even you just say that <laughs> I was like yes I am yeah. a bitch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally like oh my gosh I want that in my life <laughs> yeah on me again yeah oh gosh raise yeah. your voice <laughs> slap me a bit though <laughs> I'm just. I'm actually joking now. I'm actually joking. No, she's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am I the asshole? My, my fiance 
is obsessed with the Titanic movie and wants our whole wedding to be Titanic themed. I don't really like the movie that much and I figured that it would be unfair to theme our entire wedding about something that only one of us cares about. Yeah. I told him I wouldn't mind some Titanic references here and there, but he started crying and said he wants the whole thing to be Titanic themed because that's the wedding he always dreamed about. Mm. He always dreamed about. He then stormed out the house and hasn't spoke to me since. I feel bad for making him cry, but I still think he's being unreasonable. Um, he came around today and said he was sorry for overreacting. It was just something he'd been really passionate about for ages. We've agreed to have a dual theme for our wedding, Titanic and Batman themed, because I'm a big Batman fan. Um, what would you do kind of previous to, to the rectifying it, I guess? Oh, my God. Um, am I the arsehole? Am I the arsehole? I spoke to my parents about it and they said that if I want to get married, I need to learn to make sacrifices so I should just go along with it. No. Am I the arsehole? No, you're not. Come on, your parents are extreme and clearly traditional and clearly have sacrificed a lot mm. when it comes to their relationship. The thing is with your wedding, Nimi, is mm. that Deep had a wedding and you had a wedding. So you could do the wedding you wanted and he got to do the wedding he wanted and yeah. you were both sound. Everyone was happy. So maybe we need two weddings yes. for everyone. Yeah, I think that... Mm, spenny, but... The thing is, like, this is where the cracks start to show mm. when you're planning a, a, a wedding because yeah. you really get to know people and what their, like, wants and agendas are. Yeah. I just, I don't think he's an arsehole if he doesn't want the same thing. Mm. Like, I feel like also, you know, they say like girls grow up like dreaming about their wedding and dreaming about what it's going to be. Do they actually though? I, like, don't, is I it never that, did. Yeah, is it like, that's just very much like Disney fairy tale thing. But does the average woman on the street go and I want, this is the day I've always wanted and it's going to be that way. I never did. I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe they do. Maybe I, I'm my sure gut some instinct do. is maybe they do. I'm sure some do, but also guys do too. I'm sure at some point, like, or have their clear like what I want my wedding day to look like. I never, mate. Never had a uh, really no. Because the thing is, I know Catherine has such a good eye. She gets colours. I knew what type of flowers. I knew how it was going to kind of look, mm. but I just let her do it. Yeah. Because I knew whatever it was going to be was going to be, be class great. anyway. Yeah, yeah, she's, I mean, you can trust her to really Yeah, do it. so like everything was gorgeous. I, I don't think when the venue had white linen for the tables at dinner time, I didn't think she'd have to spend, I don't think she needed to spend money on a slightly off white linen <laughs> just for the one um, hour in which it was being used. Yeah. But that's by the by. She had a theme, <laughs> she wanted to do it, I'll leave her to it. And that's done now. Yeah. And you're celebrating your anniversary. Yeah. How so many years now? Is, um, two years this week, yeah. Two years we've been wow. married. Ten years together. Mm. It's a long time. So fuck yeah, Nimi. Can I be honest? Yeah. It's fucking too long, babe. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was I Yasmin's mean. age when I met, and Yasmin's twenty-two. Was twenty-two, yeah. twenty-one when I met Catherine. I think about this all the time because me and you have similar stories. Mm. Like I met my husband when I was eighteen, but like I feel like I'm constantly discovering new versions of him. So it's like I'm meeting someone new. Over I think and over Catherine again. will 100% agree with you on that. Really? Like she's discovering new versions of me every couple of years. Yeah. The JJ she met is fucking not the JJ she's got now. No way. I mean, the JJ I saw last week is not the same JJ I've got today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I change daily. Yeah, exactly. Um, like even when she like talks to me about these sort of things, it's like I love all the JJs. Yeah. <laughs> There's about 27 of them. Yeah. But yeah, she loves them all. Just not the um, the version of JJ. Don't. No, this is not a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, fine. Go on, tell me what is it? No, it's fine. I was going to tell you my favorite version of you. Which one so is far. it? Okay. So there's two versions. Okay. My first favorite version of JJ was when Phoenix was first born. Mm -hmm. Because it was like a shift happened in your life mm -hmm. and you were so stressed before then. Mm -hmm. But then this beautiful boy was born and like the realization of life kind of came to you. Mm -hmm. So that was one. This version today sitting opposite me is by far my most favorite. Really? Why? I feel like you just are so much more sure of yourself. Mm. And I know that we all go through shit, whether it's, and running a business is so hard and mm. all this stuff, but you as a human have come leaps and bounds. Mm in your growth and evolution, I feel like you're more sure of like who you are, what you actually like to do, 
um, what actually brings you joy and what doesn't mm -hmm. and the things that don't, you really don't cater to that anymore. Yeah. I just feel like you're just more on, on the right path of who you are. I think growing up, I was obsessed with the idea of having as many friends as possible. Mm. I wanted to be loved by everyone. To an extent, sometimes I don't like to be disliked, but I have to get over that. I'm still not fully over that. But I've realized I don't need that many mates. I just need and I want the right people around me. Yeah. And I'm very quick now. I'm like, I've took a bit of your leaf. I'm very mm. quick at disregarding the people that don't serve me positively anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like some people learn that really late on in life. Yeah. And, like, none of us have time for it. But the thing is, that my past of having all these friends, sometimes they creep up and try and message mm. me and don't understand why I'm not thinking about them or reaching out to them. Like, I just don't have time. Yeah. My 20s was spent hearing all the sad stories of my friends and how I can help to support them. Yeah. And I never got any support with anything yeah. I've really gone through. Yeah. There's a few that have. Mm. So if you're listening to this, go, fuck off, JJ. Yeah, yeah you have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But there are many that I have been a soundboard to mm. and just had to listen to all their shit yeah. without them going like, what's going on with you? Mm. I know. I don't really that. like talking about it anyway because it's just like my yeah. business and I'll deal with it in my own way. Yeah, I noticed that. Like next time you hang out with your friends, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group, actually just observe mm. who takes active interest in you yeah or are you just sitting there listening to them talk about their life i find that because and you may get this as well i find because my job's so different to what anyone else does mm. not really understands is not really asks yeah there's a couple that do but you don't get it that much yeah. like they've probably got it more because it's a business and people mm. understand how business works yeah but in the past it's kind of like I just want to hear about them. Yeah. And I don't mind that. Yeah. It kind of get, takes its toll when it's just you call me up when there's a problem sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just like good to be aware of those around you. And if they are. We are really becoming the self help podcast. I think I might move genres in this podcast categories to self help and take on Jay Shetty. I think we should. I actually think we should. Yeah. I mean, I, I reckon we could get those numbers. He's been at the top for too long and someone needs to take him down. I think JJ and Nimi and the man and woman to do it. Oh, yeah. It needs Watch two back, of us. Jay. It needs two of us. Yes. But we'll do it. Um, what would you do? Well, no, quickly. If you were to have a theme. Yeah. Like an outward, out there theme oh, yeah. of a wedding, what would it be? <sighs> no judgment. Everyone goes along with it. Everyone's happy. Oh, that's so weird, actually. I was going to say Mamma Mia, but I basically <laughs> had that. I feel like yeah, I had that actually, in Greece. Yeah, you actually did. But I would say Mamma Mia or like, I love Greece. Mm. I love Greece. Do you go there often? Do you go there on holiday and that? I don't no, think sorry, you do. No, sorry, I meant Greece as in the movie Greece. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Greece, like Greece Lightning. Oh, right, okay. Like, I would love that kind of thing. Like a Greece wedding and then Leather like all- Leather jackets. Yeah, and then your side like wear pink jackets. Yeah, those old school cars. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Like weddings aren't, like, weddings are fun, but I feel like this, the first half of the day is all a bit too serious and traditional. Yeah. I went to a wedding recently, actually. It was in the Isle of Wight. And it was like a everything that a wedding normally is, they wanted to do it completely different. Oh. And I loved loved it for them. Yeah. Like It was so much fun because of that. It was yeah. like, fuck it. He loves Oasis. He loves rock and roll. Like That's how he wanted his wedding to be. And it kind of followed the theme of just like against the, the man. Yeah. He actually did his groom speech. Mm -hmm. I was emceeing. And he, I had to spend a lot of time emceeing just while he could get ready into his outfit. Yeah. He come out as the groom dressed as a woman with a pink wig Strong. and a dildo at the end of the microphone and then sat on his um, now father-in-law's lap who inc was incredibly uncomfortable watching it and it was just like chatting to him in a girl's voice. Stop it. Imagine that at a wedding. That was the kind of wedding it was and everyone was wearing colourful outfits. No one was wearing bland colours. What like, was his bride doing? She loved it. Like they're both on the same boat. Like she found it. She had no idea, and they all had little surprises throughout the day Aww. for each other. It was lovely. See, that's where like personality comes through. You get to mm. know the couple a lot more. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Then you can look back and be like, "Fuck it, I did it the way I yeah, wanted." Yeah, exactly. To do. Both of them did. Um, what theme would you have? Um, I know Catherine would have a Harry Potter theme, and she'd fucking oh, dress nice. me up as fucking Harry Potter. Yeah. And I'd she'd be Ginny, and it would just be this whole fucking thing. And then she'd probably have an owl coming down with the rings. Oh God. We'll that dress would dress up Phoenix so as cool. fucking Voldemort or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Baby Voldemort. So <laughs> he basically is right now <laughs> trying to speak. Um, actually, the what would you do is on the theme of weddings. All right, okay, cool. It okay. happens, but we don't plan it. Yeah. That was a smooth transition. 
Okay. So I am. Th- I have just got married to my husband, and I am thinking of leaving him already. Fucking how? Just as in like days, weeks, months? Let me set you context. My past experiences with cake smashing included an incident where my forehead was accidentally cut when my mum pushed me into her birth into my birthday cake. I told him before the wedding that I am so against it. I warned him that if he ever did it to me, I would leave him. During our wedding cake cutting ceremony, he completely disregarded my warning and smeared cake on my face. I walked out from the celebration straight away. I left the event and I stayed at a friend's house that night. Fuck, he's completely left the whole wedding. I think I want a divorce. What would you do? Now. The gaze is obviously in the wrong. But being a man and having a man's brain, there is no way he would have put, done that to her unless she gave him the idea in the first place. Even if she said, don't do that. Yeah. That's all I want to do now. Yeah. I can't help myself. It's, yeah, you cannot tell guys, especially if you've got like an impulsive tendency like personality like you would yes so if if, Ka- if Catherine was like okay when i walk down the aisle don't do like a licking gesture or don't slap my ass as i'm just getting up the aisle like don't do that yeah if she said that to me i'll be smacking her booty straight away i'm licking all I'm over licking my mouth every, i'm licking yeah. your whole face yeah yeah do you know what i mean so yeah. Obviously, the guy's in the wrong, but unfortunately, but she, she like, put the idea in his head. She has clear trauma from it, okay? This is way deeper than, like, babe, listen, don't Not be really silly into and embarrass it. us. Yeah. Like, it's, I really don't you like it. You sounded really cockney there. Really? <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking sit there and embarrass <laughs> us. <laughs> don't do it, babe. Yeah, um, but this is, like, she has an actual trauma from her mum mm, pushing like, her into her birthday cake. Yeah. And like sat him down and was like, please don't do it. I really don't like it. They had probably had a full on conversation about it. And he probably said, babe, I completely understand. Mm. It fucking comes to your wedding cake and he smears it across her face. Mm. What did he expect to happen? Yeah. And also red flag. He didn't even listen to you when you maturely communicated what you don't want. And he still went ahead and did it. But we are men, Nimi. We are cavemen. Don't put the idea in our head in the first place. There is no way he would have done that at all. I don't think cake smashing is that big of a thing that everyone does it. I like, I've never really, I've seen a couple of clips online, but it's not something I ever thought about. Going to no. smash Catherine's face into the wedding cake. Yeah. And I reckon maybe people might have been jeering him on. I mean, yeah, I think he told his friends, guys, she told me not to do it. He went, you definitely should now. Yeah. Friend- We're not realising the trauma behind it. Some friends are really just against your marriage. Well, I will give you £10 or I'll give you 50 dirhams if you do that. Yeah. So he's saying, she's saying, what would you do now? Mm. I think she wants a divorce and she's out. Is it divorce worthy? Oh, I don't think it, I'd, honestly, I'd, I'd probably chill out. I think the fact you left the whole wedding day. Is that's dramatic? shocking. I don't think, I don't know if it's dramatic. But it's just like your decision's kind of made. If it was that big of a deal for you that you didn't follow it and you walked out the rest of the wedding, the wedding cutting, the cake cutting is not the end of the day. That's at mid start of the evening. Start of the evening time. That's pre dance, that's pre everything. Yeah. (sighs) Decision's made, isn't it? She missed the band. That's a shame. I I reckon I reckon people would be trying to convince her like, oh, you know, he didn't mean it. I actually want to know like how he's groveling afterwards. Yeah. If he's groveling. Sending a slice of cake to the house. (laughs) Going, this bit wasn't ruined. I miss you. (laughs) (laughs) That is the worst thing you can possibly do. This cake smashing thing is really reminding me something from my childhood that I'd love to share. There was a time where obviously my mum had to raise six kids uh, when my dad was at work. Obviously, it's very, very stressful. I sometimes have to get up and deal with one, not getting ready for school yet and all this, but I can imagine it's absolute carnage. Imagine doing this for six yeah. kids running around the house. You have to brush their hair, make sure everything's sorted, they're dressed, they're eating and stuff like that. Oh she put everyone's whatever they wanted, wheat bix Rice Krispies. My sister was giving porridge and, and stuff like that. We were all eating our breakfast and my sister didn't want porridge. Didn't want it. Yeah. I'm not eating it. Yeah. Mum's like, you f- you're eating it? Yeah. I'm not eating it. I don't want porridge. Mm. I want Something else. Yeah. Mum's like, just eat it. Very stressful um, scenario. Of course. 
Um, and then my sister was like, no, I'm not eating it. No, I'm not eating it. She was very stubborn. So she didn't eat it. So my mum grabbed her face <laughs> and went, eat it! And slammed her face into the porridge. And all that had come out was just her with her <laughs> lip quivering with ready breck, <laughs> oh, <laughs> slowly oh pouring down her face with tears. <gasps> So funny. Did it go in her mouth though? Did she eat she, it? She maybe had a grain. Nice. One piece of oat. Well, it worked. But honestly, that image will forever live in my mind as a moment of just obviously not that funny at the time. Obviously, yeah. don't parent like that. Yeah. But when you're raising six kids and one's just not doing as they're told and of you're course. annoyed to F, porridge you're in the driven, face. You're driven, you're driven to, to, to that point. I personally would hate cake smeared on my face. Like I, I'm at my really? wedding. Really, I thought you'd be into it. No, I'm at my wedding. I've just paid for hair and makeup to be done. You're smearing cake on my face. No, just no. <laughs> like let's feed each other like normal fucking adults. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not be smashing shit. And I hate when people then start grabbing the cake and like throwing it at each other. Does this thing happen? Because in our bit, the cake cutting was just the kind of thing I've that was in videos. the way. I sliced the cake, fist bumped, cake got taken away. People maybe had a slice or two. The whole cake was chucked in the bin without us knowing. Yeah, you know, that same happened in my the wedding. The caterers just chuck it away. They forgot to distribute the cake. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck it went. And we paid a lot of money for that cake. Yeah. I'd love some cake right now. Fucking Yasmin, go get some cake. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> lovely. Um, so, yeah, in, to conclude, I would not divorce my husband over it. But it's not cool that he did it. Yeah, therapy. Yeah, so that's what you do. Fucking couples therapy. But I think you could work it out. Exactly. Um, is that it? Is there anything else you want to discuss? Have, was that a, what would you do? Yeah. That's it, mate. Yeah. Khalas, 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 khalas. Look at us. Shukran Habibis for listening to this podcast. We love you long time. Please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Also follow us on Instagram, share the reels, and then also subscribe to our YouTube, WWYD, JJ and Nimi. We're on TikTok as well, but I can't be asked to push it. Yeah, whatever that is. That would do its it. thing. Yeah, find it. Uh, lots of love. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.